This edition of the Weightlifting World podcast is brought to you by Warrior Princess, apparel and accessories for ladies in weightlifting, strength sport and crossfit, also featuring the official Nadezhda Estekina clothing range. Check out Warrior Princess on the web at www.wpwear.uk. Welcome to this edition of the Weightlifting World podcast. Uh, today we're joined all the way from Germany by Hayo Sepelt. Um, some of you may have seen the, the breaking news in the media over the last few days uh, regarding uh, a doping cover-up, an extensive doping, doping cover-up um, within Russia. Um, this stemmed from a documentary broadcast uh, in the in Germany on ARD uh, produced by our guest today, Hayo Sepelt. Hello Hayo, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good, good. Um, we know you're obviously very busy and very restricted in terms of time. So basically, uh, just in your own words, if you could just uh, tell our listeners, uh, obviously we've, we haven't seen an English version yet, and uh, being British, our language skills are somewhat poor. Um, so if you could just tell our listeners uh, briefly what you found um, in your, your research and in your investigations. I would say, uh, if you summarize it, that we found a lot of evidence for state-supported uh, systematic doping abuse in, in Russia, uh, particularly in athletics, but also in other sports, obviously. And this has uh, support from uh, people in the government, is particularly from the sports ministry. And it leads to uh, doctors and coaches um, particularly in Moscow, but also in other regions. And it looks like that in Russia, um, a lot of athletes, um, for example, in athletics and track and field, they have to use anabolic steroids or EPO or other for prohibited substances in order to get success, in order to be a member of the national team. This is more or less a routine, routine procedure in, in Russia. And uh, this is what at least people told us on camera athletes but also a former member of the russian anti-doping agency agency which is a main source a main witness uh, i think one of the most important whistleblowers in the whole world uh, in the history of sports vitali stepanov um, both of them released leaked a lot of information and it was so dangerous for them that they decided to to leave the country okay and obviously um there was a testimony from athletes such as Evgeny Pesharina, uh, Maria Savio- Savanova. Um, what made them specifically choose this time to come forward and blow the whistle? Maria Savinova didn't blow the whistle. She was um, she was uh, filmed secretly by an, uh, one of our informants, and uh, she admitted in that secretly recorded video that she's using drugs and she has contacts with doping control apps. So it means she didn't want to do that, uh, but this was one of the proofs which we needed to 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 see that even Olympic champions or particularly Olympic champions are part of the doping system. And she was Olympic champion in 2012. When we talk about Evgenia Pesharina, she was on camera and this was not a secret video, this was a a very um, regular interview mm-hmm. and she told us very clearly she is a former disco thrower also banned that from her um, estimation um, more as 99 percent of the team members of the russian athletics um, squad are um, um, in a doping plan in a doping in a systematic doping regime in, in russia okay and uh, to what degree were the russian government involved the anti-doping is more or less 100% financed by the government. There's an agency, Rusada, called Anti-Doping Agency of Russia, Rusada, yeah. and there's a doping control lab. And um, according to the information from the former member of Rusada, uh, former employee of Rusada, Vitali Stepanov, they um, have been part of the cover-up of the um, cheating system in Russia because they um, they re- gave information about sample numbers of name of athletes to the ministry or to the doping controller, according to Vitaly. Um, and so it was possible for people to identify who has a positive sample 
So it was very easy to cover it up. And uh, there's only one reason to do so. That means if you want to know a sample number or if you want to connect a sample number to a name of an athlete, the only reason to do so is to get information. And if you see that a lot of athletes apparently uh, in a doping system have not been tested positive ever, mm -hmm. uh, that means that there is obviously a very big co corruption and a very big cover-up going on. Sure. I think within within our sport of weightlifting, um, I'm going to say something quite controversial, but I think the um, to come out with a, a statement that you know the vast majority of Russian athletes are doping is almost, to many people in our sport, a bit like saying, breaking news, the world is round. Um, I think it's been assumed for quite a while, and obviously, but you've brought some evidence to the to the table, and I think that's been that's been very important. I mean, um, you know, for example, within Russian within Russian weightlifting, their national championships have absolutely zero anti doping efforts. Um, regularly do performances significantly above what they what they will perform in a in a tested competition a tested international competition performances are significantly higher so it's been relatively i think people have assumed this for a while is that something you've come across in other sports obviously yes and for example from track and field from athletics we heard that uh, at um, russian championships people sometimes julia told us that story is that she she um, came dirty to the championships to compete and then she was protected by uh, um, head of the um, medical department Sergei Portugalov she, uh, he told her according to her information just give me uh, give me a text message send me a text message with a number of your sample which you can read on the um, pink um, um sheet of paper where you have to sign the official doping control procedure there's a number give me the number and i will make sure that you don't get tested positive even if you are dirty that's example that's in feeling that you, shows you that obviously russian champions are corrupt because otherwise they wouldn't do so so uh, uh, if you see dco start doping control officers um, walking around at the championships and you see them but you know what's really happening in the background then you cannot trust anymore sure and, and obviously um, athletics was the, the focus of your documentary and there was you know evidence potentially that at least one person in the IAAF was receiving bribes to cover up positive tests um, in your investigations did you uncover any similar testimony regarding other sports and national or international governing bodies of other sports no, we, we we talked only about athletics but regarding international influence or international um, how do we say that in English international um, spread? Is that okay? I don't know how to say that. It's, it's, it, 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 it only led to one international federation, and that was IWF. Uh, but that doesn't mean, from my point of view, that only IWF is concerned about that. But I can because I give you an example because you talk about weightlifting. Mm -hmm. And that means we talk also about Tamas Ayan, the yes. Hungarian um, president of, of the International Federation. Uh, all people know, everyone knows, in the world of um, anti-doping, that it, it, it's, it's, it's worthwhile to take a deeper look into weightlifting. Uh, you know that the German Federation a few years ago mm -hmm. wanted to, to, uh, to get, him, get rid of him which obviously didn't work uh, because he has so many influence in international uh, national organizations and so many friends who support him who are in favor of him because i don't know why but i could imagine that is exactly the same what happens in other international federations that uh, if there's a certain dependence they are not independent from 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 opinions from from influence so uh, it's very easy to 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 convince uh, people from national organizations to vote for Mr. Ayan. Yes. I wouldn't say, I think that's the same in FIFA and the World Cup and the football yeah. um, 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 federation and the international one, that if you have 200 countries worldwide and they have one country, one vote, I don't know if it's the same in, in the weightlifting union. So um, it's very easy because, uh, for example, in football, Germany and England are the 
countries or, the, or Great Britain are the countries with the most of uh, football players worldwide. Yeah. But they have the same the same number of votes, like um, uh, Virgin Islands or whatever, uh, or, or like like um, like small islands in the Caribbean. So sure. uh, this is, this doesn't work. And I, I don't know if the same in weightlifting union. And if that's the same, you can see how easy it is for a president to get get votes for him from little countries maybe um if he supports them in a certain way yes. you never know how many gifts um maybe go to them i have no idea because i'm not i'm not focused on weightlifting but i can tell you i know sports and i know how sports systems and sports federation are working yeah so I could imagine that uh, this leads to the very bad situation that even people you would not trust in uh, and you do, wouldn't believe in, like Thomas Ayan, they are still president. Yes, and and, and obviously you, you said you, you focused very much on athletics. Did anything at all relevant to weightlifting come up in your investigations? Did you any talk about any other any specific weightlifters or anything of that nature? I don't remember if if, if uh, Vitali talked about weightlifting too when he said that some athletes have not been tested. Okay. It might be the case that he talked also about weightlifting, but I don't know exactly anymore. Sorry. Okay. And I, I know you're, you're pressed for time, so just just one last question to finish up. Um, obviously, as you've you've mentioned that through um, through other you mentioned the German Federation looking to remove Tamasayan, and obviously there's been similar things um germany seems to be have been one of the most vocal nations um regarding the need for kind of an overhaul of anti-doping approaches um so here's a question that personally i've mulled over for for a number of years how do you personally as, a, as an expert in this area really i think especially the real world situation how do you think that that nations like germany continue to compete with and often beat russia um in sports if the Russian athletes are basically free to dope as they wish, whereas the German athletes and other na- athletes from other nations are supposedly clean. Would you say so because the Germans sometimes win against the Russians, or would you say yes, so? Yes, yes. I mean, so if... if yeah, yeah, I tell you, I tell you, you are right. This leads to the question, if the Germans dope too. Yes, example. absolutely. I mean, Yes, the, I, have, I have no expla- explanation for that, but I would say that... Um, 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 I, I would never, never, never protect German interests because yes. I'm, I'm a journalist, and so I have no, so I have no feeling for that. Uh, no, no, I'm not in favor of that. But what I can say is that um, I wouldn't say that the dimension of the doping system we have in Russia is the same in other countries. What I would always say is that we have the same mentality all over the world. There's no difference. That means the the, the seduction to dope. That means the money question, the, 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 the dependence on the needs to get sponsors, uh, the needs to get um, to that regularly money on your bank account, mm-hmm. and, and also the desire of uh, be successful. This is always a, in a, a very essential part of sports, so and professional sports and and commercial sports. So. The seduction to dope is everywhere in the world the same, and you are right. If you see, for example, doping controls in Germany, we have a we have a positive rate of positive uh, tests of zero point one percent, but they have been um, I, I don't know the English the, the English word polls. That means people have been asked um, um, confidentially um, sur- uh, surveys. Do yes, you call it surveys? the poll. Yes, yes, yes. yes um, where people have been asked um, uh, secretly about their opinion on certain things or what or about their behavior. And in Germany, we had some of these surveys which showed that maybe 10, 15, 20 or more percent of athletes have doped or at least or are still are doping. Yes. When you see, when you see that only 0.1 percent are at the end sanctioned, there is a big a lack in between yes and, yeah and the big difference so i wouldn't say i would never say that german athletes are clean never but what i can say is that this system of oppression the system that people are afraid that they suffer that they are uh, treated 
um, like products in a, in a industri industrial production. That's what that's the way it looks like for me in Russia. That is not the same in Western countries. There are little differences. Yeah, I wouldn't say that the people here have a good and comfortable life because sports, for, uh, particularly on the level of amateurs and a lot of sports, you uh, you have a lot of people who don't earn, earn so much money. It's always complicated for them to live and to survive. But it is not the same as in Russia. I wouldn't say so. The dimension is bigger. Yes. And, and that's probably reflected in the number of victories in, in a sport like weightlifting. Lots of Russian success, some German success. Mm -hmm. That's probably a reflection. Well, listen, Hayo, thank you very much for your time. Uh, we really appreciate you, you taking time out of your very, very busy schedule at the moment to speak to us. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.